this is the vibrodyne 1k variable frequency variable voltage vibratory feeder controller let us have a look at the terminals this is the main power connector the first two terminals over here are where you connect your coil the next two are the life and the neutral or the phase and the neutral and the bottom two are earth pins over here you can see we have connected the live the neutral because of which the controller is working and the last terminal we have connected the earth wire when you connect your coil the coil should be connected between terminal 1 and terminal 2 and the earth connection for your coil that should be connected at this point let us have a look at the other available interfaces or connections the first three pins or the first port is for sync in and sync out connections we will talk about that later the next three are for your analog inputs instead of the keypad if you want to control it with a potentiometer or a 4 to 20 ma signal or a 0 to 10 volt signal this is where you connect it the next three are for Modbus. This controller comes with Modbus over RS485. You can directly interface it to your PLC or higher end systems. This is where you make the RS485 connections. The next three are for CAN bus connection. CAN bus is not actually being used at the moment. Sync and CAN bus are two things which we will talk about later. The last four terminals that you see over here they are used for your enable logic if you want to start the feeding by a 24 volt enable signal coming externally or in case you have some sensors connected to your subsequent systems like level sensors optical sensors etc this is where you connect those sensors and these sensors through either logic high or logic low which you will be configuring over here these sensors indicate to the vibrodyne when to start feeding when to stop feeding these configuration switches over here they are for setting the modbus address and this blank port over here that you see this port is for connecting analog keys we will discuss the analog keys later as well let us look at the basic operation of this controller when you turn on the controller for the first time press the enter button what you see over here on the display IL that is current limit factory default current limit is 2 amperes you can use the arrow keys to either increase or decrease this current limit Right now I am going to set it at 4 amperes. Once I have come to the figure 4, I press enter to move on to the next option. Now this is where you set either half wave or, or full wave. H indicates half wave, F indicates full wave. If, you won't, if, if your coil operates on full wave, you set this on F, if the coil operates on half wave, you set it on H, F, H. I press enter again and move on to the next option. Now this is my controller default screen. We have made the basic settings for current limit. We have set the current limit at 4 amperes and the output mode at half wave. And now we will look at starting the feeder. Press the mode button once to enter mode. This indicates the mode number. You can either select between mode 98 or mode 98 is factory default. If you make any settings and you are not able to go back to your original settings. The next is mode 02, mode 01 and mode 00. Mode 02 being the most comprehensive. We will have a look at the features available in mode 02. 
on mode 0 to I press enter and I come on to the amplitude screen. This is where I set the voltage. A79 indicates this is now at 79% voltage. I can increase or decrease this value with the arrow keys. Let's say I want to start at somewhere around 60%. Ideally, when you are turning on a feeder for the first time, we would recommend that you start at a lower value like 55 or 60 percent and move on ahead as you tune your system. I press enter to move on to the next parameter. The next parameter is frequency. Right now we have set it at 33 hertz. I can again use the arrow key to increase or decrease the frequency. I have now brought it to 51.5 hertz. We can vary the frequency right from 10 Hz to 200 Hz. That is the capability of this controller. I have plotted down to 10 Hz. I can gradually scroll up in terms of 0.1 Hz, in steps of 0.1 Hz. Or if I hold the up arrow for a longer time, it will start jogging ahead. For longer stroke lengths, I will set lower frequencies and for normal stroke lengths, I will set slightly higher frequencies somewhere between 45 and 60. Right now I am setting this as 50 and pressing enter again. A soft start. Right now the soft start is 2 seconds. I can bring it down to minimum 1 second and I can take it up to maximum 5 seconds. I am setting the soft start right now at 4 seconds pressing enter. This is the soft stop value. Will your controller output actually go to zero? I press enter over here. I am not changing this. I press enter over here again and I come to enable low. This is the enable screen. This is very useful if you want to start your feeding process based on some external input, based on some external digital input or by connecting a level sensor over here. As I had informed earlier, this is the enable port. You can connect PNP, NPN, optical, capacitive, inductive sensors over here. Once you connect your sensor or your 24 volt signal over here, the second option is whether you want an active high enable or an active low enable. L indicates an active low enable. What this means is, when I set this one enable low, the controller will wait for a low signal over here to start the feeding process. If I change this to enable high, this is H, enable E and H, enable high. Enable high indicates you will have to give a 24 volt signal over here or a logic high signal over here in order for the feeding operation to start. As long as that signal does not appear here, feeding operation will not start. And in enable low, if there is a high signal appearing here, feeding will not start. Feeding will start only when there is a low signal available at the input. Right now, I don't want to connect any external signal over here. That's why I'm leaving this on enable low and I'm moving on to the next screen. I press enter again and I come to the final screen. This is the on screen. This is the final selection that you have to make. When we change on from no to yes, this is N on N. When I change this from on no to on yes and I press enter, I will start getting an output. Put on a multimeter. Can you see the display? So when I press enter on the ONY screen, look at this.
display when I press enter on the O and Y screen. The output is increasing. So this output gradually increases over a period of 5 seconds to whatever we have set. If you want to see the set point, you see the green LED over here that indicates the output is on. When I press enter on the screen, I see 60%. I can change this. Sorry, this is because my hand is shaking a bit. When I change this, I can increase or decrease the output. Up arrow increases. You see the increase? We have gone up to 106. This is now 70.7%. .7%. Similarly, the bottom arrow decreases. You press enter again and you can vary the frequency during runtime as well. Remember one thing, when you have done tuning your system, so for example, what you are having right now, 67.2% and frequency of 50.5 Hertz. If you think this is the best performance for your system, you want to save these parameters. Don't forget to press start again. When you press start again, look at the multimeter screen. When you press start again, the output goes down to zero for a short duration and it comes up again. So now your output is saved. If you want to stop your feeding, you can either turn off the mains and the next time you start, you will start at the same value. And when I turn it on again, when I turn the main on again, I'll start, I'll resume at my saved values. You see it's rising. And when I want to stop the output, I simply play, press escape. So after my soft stop, stop duration, the output goes down. The next time you want to start at your pre previously saved values, you simply has, have to press start again. The unit resumes at the previously saved values. If you want to modify these values, you again press enter to change these values. Press enter to go to frequency, change these values also. Press enter to come back to the default screen. And if you think this performance is better, you press start again. So start saves your output. Start saves your settings. To stop the feeding, I press escape. After pressing escape, wait till the green LED goes off to turn off the main or do anything else. A word of caution, turn off the mains before making any connections over here. First, for example, if you want to connect, if you want to vary the output using an analog input like a potentiometer. This is a 10k potentiometer, 10k 10 turn potentiometer. Let us connect this and see. To connect the potentiometer, I first turn off the mains, do not forget.
this is where you connect your analog input it can be a 0 to 10 volt signal or a 4 to 20 milliampere signal or a potentiometer like this this is a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer when the unit is powered off I remove the connector and insert my potential meter here also I need to put in my analog key these are analog keys and these go in over here I insert the analog key this analog key is for potential meter and now after putting my connector after connecting the analog key I turn the unit on the main saw now you will see when I start the unit that started I press come to the amplitude screen and we had saved it at 60% if I remember right but it's gone down to 23.1 now when I vary the pot you will see the amplitude goes down or it goes up you see Similarly, instead of a pot, you can connect a 0 to 10 volt signal by using this analog key over here or a 4 to 20 MA signal using this analog key over here. 4 to 20 MA or 0 to 10 volt or potentiometer.